Saying that big agriculture has been misleading with their marketing is a bit of an understatement. We've seen these terms on just about every single thing in the supermarket. In reality, most of them being used to cleverly disguise conventional feedlot, low quality products as something natural, healthy, good for you. When we know that all big ag has in mind is profit. When you have a truly high quality product, it takes time, it's more expensive, and something not talked about a lot is the American palate isn't actually used to these products because maybe they've had one or two bad experiences or they're really stuck in their ways. Most of the time, it's about the price. You know, these lower quality products are far cheaper than actually going to a truly high quality source. And I've kind of color coded these. Green is generally a safe bet. Red, which is most of these terms, are usually lies or misleading. And blue is hit or miss. It kind of means something, but it's not applicable most of the time. And we're going to start with the most popular and sought after term, grass fed, mainly for beef. Although people do refer to pork, chicken, eggs as grass fed, although you know those animals eat more than grass in the field. And this term is regulated by the USDA. Some of these are, some of these are not. And that means by definition, you have to do certain things to label your product grass fed. So the animal is on forage post weaning. The problem here is the definition of forage is very loose. It can mean corn, soy, peanuts. I mean, corn is considered a grass. So there are some feedlot cattle being marketed as grass fed. And what actually triggered me to make this video was I saw a Whole Foods commercial marketing grass fed, natural, no hormones. And most of the beef at Whole Foods is just feedlot stuff, but people think, oh, it's at Whole Foods, it must be better for you. Absolutely not the case. What's also an issue is the animal is typically fed formula, which is far less healthy than an animal fed mother's milk. So there's a couple solutions for this. Going grass fed plus organic, is a pretty basic way to ensure decent quality from the supermarket, but you are going to pay so much money for those two labels anywhere. Avoiding American grass-fed beef, you know, unless you know the farmer or supplier, is usually a safe bet. Grass-fed beef from Australia, New Zealand, other countries, Uruguay, is also safer because grain feeding is actually more expensive in those countries. Pasture-raised doesn't seem to be a regulated term, however, in the grass-fed definition terminology, they do refer to pasture as the cows physically being on the grass. So it does imply that the animals have been out in the fields going to pasture. And I've seen pasture raised more with chicken as, as opposed to beef. And I mean, that's just an excuse for them to charge three times the amount for crappy eggs. And, and the egg marketing is, is something I wasn't really gonna discuss in this video, like corn and soy free. Maybe we can touch on that another time, although I have videos on eggs in the past. For organic, the animal must be under organic management for the last third of life. For cattle, pork, lamb, which isn't that great because it can be feedlot and then they just switch over the feed, which is probably what's happening with a lot of this cheap organic American beef. Uh, for poultry, it's the second day of life, and that means a 100% organic or forage diet. The animals can also not receive growth promotants, hormonal implants, antiparasitic medication, or antibiotics. They have to have access to the outdoors, and they must be processed in a facility that is certified organic processing, and, and that means the meat is separate from the regular meat. And we have a whole video explaining this organic stuff in depth and it is reliable and it does ensure a higher quality product, but it's only really a safe bet for beef because of, of how those animals process the grains. You know, when you have cattle on grass and you give them some organic grain, it's not that bad for them, but when you have pork and chicken and it's only getting fed the organic corn, the organic soy, that's where you have an issue. Natural, uh, probably, my least favorite term, only refers to how the product was processed. It can't have 
artificial ingredients or preservatives. It can still be sprayed with chemicals. Virtually all meat is sprayed with chemicals, which is why I want my own slaughterhouse. It can be ground, frozen, cooked, and still be labeled natural. And naturally raised is a little different. When it says naturally raised, that means the animals cannot receive growth hormones, antibiotics, however, can still be given certain medications. And as I just mentioned, I think natural is the most misleading term used as it doesn't really mean anything. You know, what are you implying that the product's healthier for you? You know, isn't anything technically natural? Free range is another sketchy marketing term. It technically means the animal had access to an outdoor area during production. For poultry, the USDA requires the animals to have daily access to an outdoor area, which can basically be a fenced in concrete pad, so they're not actually getting any forage. Their diet isn't any different. The meat isn't any higher quality. It's kind of silly, and the legal definition is another incredibly misleading term, you know, just as bad as natural. For beef, pork, and lamb, there's no regulation of the term except it can't be a feedlot animal. So as long as the animal wasn't entirely confined to a feedlot, you can label it as free range. And yeah, I know the name of my company is Frankie's Free Range Meat, but that, that has a ring to it. And, and with all of these you know, misleading marketing terms, you know, what are you supposed to do? Cage free is usually tied in here with free range. And it's actually kind of funny, like, yeah, you don't want your animal locked in a cage unable to move. And then you have humanely raised, which is just as ridiculous. Oh yeah, you didn't abuse or torture your animals. But humanely raised is not regulated, whereas cage-free is regulated. So if I say my cattle was humanely raised, in most cases it's you're taking the person's word for it, although there are certifications that will like go to the farm, they'll examine it, and they'll give you a a humanely raised stamp, which to me is uh, shouldn't have to be said. Next up, we have raised without antibiotics, and all conventional meat receives a plethora of medication, and that's one of the main problems with modern meat quality. If meat is labeled raised without antibiotics or no antibiotics administered, the animals did not receive antibiotics at any point in their life. The USDA does test all meat products regardless of this labeling to make sure there's no antibiotic residue. However, the animals are still allowed things like antiparasitic medication and you know what gets injected into things when they're born, the word we can't say anymore. We really don't know what molecular residuals are in the animal's tissue. You know, they're just testing for what they know how to test for, when in reality, there's at least dozens, if not hundreds, of unknown things in the meat potentially damaging our health. What you don't know can hurt you, right? These people love playing stupid and lying to you and just picking one thing and making it seem like it's a big deal. Raised without added hormones. And hormones like estrogen are used to fatten animals, actually only approved for use in cattle and lamb. Uh, so. I mean, I'm sure they would give it to pork and chicken if they could, but what that means is the estrogen, mainly a concern in beef, directly impacts our own hormones, regardless of how insignificant people tell you it is, it is still affecting you. You know, there's a reason when people go conventional feedlot carnivore and they start eating two, three, four, five pounds of crappy beef, pork, and chicken, the omega-6 plus the estrogen ruins their appetite, makes them gain weight. And that's why when people go high quality carnivore, they actually improve their health for the long term. So as you would imagine, this label should only be on beef, but you know these dirt bags like labeling pork and chicken raised without hormones as well, even though it's not even allowed. Because of that, if the company puts this label on a pork or chicken product, they have to also say that federal regulation prohibits the use of hormones in poultry. Some companies that do this, butcher box, it's on their pork and chicken because they're selling regular conventional supermarket meat trying to pretend it's healthy. It's, it's kind of, I know I said these other terms bother me, but 
This is just so misleading. It's insane. All vegetarian diet, this one's been bothering me more lately because it's getting more and more popular. And it's self-explanatory. The animal was not fed other animal products in their diet, which is actually a bad thing for chickens and pigs as they're omnivores. You know, like, imagine if fish was labeled all vegetarian feed when, when fish are supposed to be eating other fish, just like chickens are supposed to be eating bugs. And the conventional feed that is all vegetarian is always corn and soy based, which is horrible for the animals and creates horribly unhealthy meat. But hey, corn and soy is vegetarian and the average person thinks vegetarian is healthy therefore if the animals are vegetarians their meat must be like being vegetarian it must be healthy <laughs> a pretty twisted marketing but apparently it's working then we have sustainably raised and locally grown which i think were more popular you know five ten years ago and they don't actually have a legal definition from the usda most of the time to my understanding this is abused to sell conventional meat or vegetables under local marketing terminology. Yeah, so when you go into Whole Foods and you see local grass-fed, but it's actually feedlot beef, like, you know, I mean, it drives me crazy. Sustainable doesn't mean anything either. I mean, anything is sustainable if you're doing it right. What they, they're trying to imply is that, you know, it's, it's wild quality, the animals are living lavish lives, perfect how they're supposed to be. That, that's the assumed naive, you know, it's a tiny little farm doing things the right way. And that's how it was, again, five or ten years ago. But now the supermarkets have, have kind of grabbed onto that to sell you regular stuff. Now, to my understanding, most of this stuff is specific in America. And when you talk about breeds like heritage, you know, in a lot of other countries, there are animals that are known for having higher quality meat, milk, cheese, whatever. In the case of America, the breed is actually used to mislead people. You know, Angus prime beef, heritage Berkshire pork. I've seen people even using Iberico marketing in some cases. And all that means is the breed of the animal, not what it was fed, not how it was raised, no indicator of the actual quality of the meat. Yes, certain breeds tend to have inherently tastier, more marbled, even sometimes healthier flesh, and the animals are certainly more expensive, so when you pay more, you are getting something. Angus beef is almost always grain-fed conventional. Berkshire pork, same thing, conventional corn and soy feed, just clever marketing. And I've seen farmers import Iberico pigs from Spain and feed them corn and soy, you know, which is why I sell legitimate Iberico di Bolota, and I'm hoping when I have a farm in the future, I can actually have high quality pork. The stuff like grade A, prime, choice, that you see on meat, even dairy and eggs, isn't really relevant. Because in the first place, if you're buying products labeled that, they're low quality conventional stuff. Yeah, I mean the steaks on, on Frankie's free range meat, I will label them prime because people assume prime is more marbling, but my steaks are not technically certified USDA prime. And these are all regulated terms that, you know, in those big processing plants, you know, the inspectors go through, they examine the product, they make sure it meets certain color, size, standards that have absolutely nothing to do with how healthy the product is for you. So some of these terms are relatively new. Some of these terms have been used for a while. But one thing that is probably the newest is omega-3 and regenerative. You guys might have seen omega-3 pork, omega-3 chicken. I have seen zero proof whatsoever that omega-3 meat is higher quality. I think they're just lying about what they're giving the animals. Maybe they throw some flaxseed in there. However, if the animal was actually on a super high quality diet to improve the omega-3 to omega-6 ratio in the meat, the flesh would be much darker. It would have a very specific flavor. I think what they're doing is they're giving the animals corn, soy, and fish meal and just using omega-3 marketing, which is still not good for you. Regenerative, like, they're pandering to the climate nonsense. You know, I, I really don't like talking about the climate. I think it's all fake, made up, BS. 
and saying, oh, I'm regenerating the environment by having my cow shit in the field. Like, dude, shut the fuck up. I'm not buying your garbage fucking meat. That, that pisses me off the most. Dude, oh, my beef's regenerative. I'm saving the planet. Buy my meat. Yeah, suck my fucking cock. I, I'm, I, I shouldn't have even talked about those terms. I, they just aggravate me so much. Yeah, my meat's regenerative. Good dude, shut the fuck up. I can't fucking take it anymore. I can't fucking take it. Okay? It's, it's a, just such a bunch of liars. Like, it's disgusting. Everyone tries to separate themselves from everyone else to sell the same shitty fucking beef. Okay? All right, that's it. I'm done being angry. I got stuff to do tomorrow. So thank you guys for joining me today. If you could please drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week, and be sure to check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. If you'd like to support me, you can check out frank-stefano.com, sign up for my newsletter, as well as see all of my businesses on that site. Thanks again, guys. Let me know how you like this. Hopefully this helps some of you guys out understand the market a little bit more. And if you have any questions or if I missed a term, please let me know down below. I'll see you guys tomorrow.